Kia ora from New Zealand everyone. I'm Donna Louise and welcome to my YouTube channel for the love of puzzles. I am still buzzing and jet lagged so I apologize for my appearance. I've only been home for four days now after like 50 hours of travel to get back from the World Jigsaw Puzzle Championships in Spain. Four days of speed puzzling, just fun and amazement. Um, Jeanette and I already did like a vlog style video. We did one for her channel and one on this channel and those are posted. I'll leave links in the description below to those. So go check those out. In today's video, I'm going to talk about my experience in the individual event and then I'll do another video covering pairs and teams. Now there's so much content and there's so much we could all talk about and I know I'm not going to cover everything so make sure to watch other YouTubers videos and go watch the live streams like how exciting were they? Watch the live streams. I'll leave a link below to the World Jigsaw Puzzle Federation's channel. And there's all the live streams covering the individuals, the pairs, the teams. So much fun. Hours and hours of entertainment. Oh my goodness. And I apologize already if this video is a bit rambly. I am seriously jet lagged. I've never felt the effects of jet lag this badly. In fact, I still haven't allowed myself to drive because I am so dizzy and I don't trust my reflexes and I'm still very giddy and emotional. So hopefully I'll maintain the tears and the excitement to a, 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 a normal level, but let's just jump right in. Oh, actually, before we just jump right in, I do have to say one thing. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone that came up to us that said hi to us, that wanted to take photos with us. I mean, it was just amazing. And then I realized I don't have all the photos. I have this book and this list of all these amazing people we met. Oh, the Canadians. Oh, I don't think we got any photos together. Are you watching from the shower? Hmm? I know you are. Scrub behind your ears. Um, just so many people, amazing people. It was so welcoming. It was so wonderful, and I know Jeanette, Vicky, Juby, and I are so appreciative of everyone that came to talk to us, that wanted photos with us, that just wanted to chat and hang out and say hi. We absolutely loved it. All the Americans we met, all the Aussies we met, thank you so much. It meant the world to us. Before I keep rambling and rambling, now let's dive into <laughs> how I did and the overall experience of competing in the individual category. So for the individuals, there were six rounds of preliminaries with approximately 100 uh, contestants per round. I did add them all up and in the end there were 579 people listed with results in those six rounds of preliminaries. Now I was in group A, the first one right in the morning and I thought this is great, it'll help with the jet lag, I'll get it out of the way, I won't spend the day being nervous. And I thought that was really good, I was glad I was in the first round. And I really appreciate that the organizers thought that I was <laughs> deserving of a front row table. I much preferred puzzling in the back row though, but so much fun. So we're all excited. The atmosphere is just buzzing. It's about to start. So many people, so many people. And they were able, I think, to do the six rounds that everybody had their own table. We didn't have to double up for individuals. And it was just great. It was just so fun to be there. So I'm in group A. And I pull out the puzzle, it's time to start. Now, let's give you a bit of backstory. First of all, I'm familiar with the Nature Edition puzzles from Ravensburger. I had done and practiced on this one. And I knew that I had not been able to complete it in 90 minutes. For me, this is a, a difficult puzzle. I should have practiced more the more difficult puzzles. Maybe you should practice the type of puzzles you're not good at. So lesson learned for next year, I should probably practice more like these styles of image, especially the Nature Edition. So I knew that the Nature Edition jigsaw puzzles were not my forte. I'd never been able to complete in 90 minutes. And I honestly thought that they may make an appearance at the competition, but I was hoping it would be more like the pairs preliminary. So sure enough, 
open the bag and I pull out the first puzzle of the competition group A. It's a nature edition jigsaw puzzle. Now I saw this and I told myself, you can do one of two things. You can either panic and get upset and tell yourself, you know you can't finish on time. Oh my goodness, hurry, 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 what are you doing? And just get all in a frenzy and not end up finishing it and be disappointed with your performance. Or you can just say, Don Louise, have fun. Just enjoy the experience. You know this is a tough puzzle for you. You know you most likely won't finish. Just do the best you can. And I'm so glad I took that minute to kind of talk to myself, because that's what I did. I said, have fun. Just enjoy it. Go with it. So this is the Nature Edition. Um, it's called Lupins. It's from a photograph from Stefan Heffele. And yeah, it was the first puzzle we pulled out that morning for Group A. Now, I did a lot of sorting, a lot of build as I sort. Oh, side note, you're probably wondering why the box is like this. For packing reasons, I dumped all the bottom of the boxes. I flattened the top so I could bring them home. And a lot of the puzzles I just put into resealable bags. Could I have maybe gotten 20, 30, or 40 more pieces in if I would have been in more of a panicky rush mode? Maybe. But would I have enjoyed it as much? Definitely not. And I think if I would have been panicky and rushed and really like tough on myself when it was done, I would have been disappointed with how I did. In the end, I tied for 60th in group A and I completed, I have a bunch of notes here, so sorry if I look down, I completed 374 pieces. Now let's have a look at the top five results. The top result was just 45 minutes, 44 minutes and 59 seconds. Let's give them that extra seconds. Mercedes, amazing. And the top five, like Kristen, Delia, Melissa, Lisa, awesome. Like, I can't imagine anyone completing this under an hour, and so many did, and I'm so in awe of everything. I felt bad for Kristen because I know a puzzler hates missing a piece and she had an obvious chunk of the sky that was missing. Not her fault. It happens. Puzzles have missing pieces or missing chunks. I'm sure that would have disappointed her. Regardless, absolutely amazing. So the thing is, when we look at the results online, they don't have the queue next to who qualified to go to the semifinals. So the rules to advance from your preliminary round to the semifinals are as follows. Um, the best participant from each country up to 30, and then the rest of the participants up to 60 in order of classification. So that meant that the best participant from each uh, country up to 30 countries move forward and I do believe for group A I had counted and I think we had 33 different countries so not every country best participant automatically advanced I want to explain a bit more about this country rule because I know a lot of people commented shouldn't it just be the fastest people why is this this country rule and and first of all I think this country rule appears in many like sporting events um, and it's, it's very common because they want it to be a worldly event with people from all sorts of countries around the world participating. And this year, they had like 60 different countries there. It was great. They do spread out the participants as evenly as possible across those six preliminary rounds um, from each country. So say, for example, Spain had, I don't know, like, did they have like 200 participants? Let's just say they had 200 participants and they would spread them out equally across those six um, categories, those six preliminary rounds. And they did that for each category, for each country. So of course, someone like me from New Zealand, there was just one other New Zealander there, Andy, who participated. And so we did not end up being in the same group, but we still had to beat out and, and, and end up being in one of the top 30 countries to automatically qualify. Now, I did tie for 60th, and because they don't have the cues listed for this particular um, round, I'm not actually sure if I qualified on, on time or piece count or if I qualified through that country rule. Mm, I'm thinking I probably qualified through the country rule. 
And so to make it more fair, because they understand that some countries have more competitions than other, some countries have more access to the jigsaw puzzles than others, to make it fair, unless they had completely unreleased jigsaw puzzles for every round and every semi-final, which that would be a lot, that would be too difficult to do. In order to kind of level the playing field, they have this country rule. It's written, we all know about it. All I can say, I guess, if you're not happy about it, then you probably don't want to come to the competition. That being said, it does get more difficult to qualify from like the semifinals to the finals, even under the country rule. And I'll explain that more when I cover the semifinals in a little bit. So there you go. That was the jigsaw puzzle from group A. And I'm so impressed with how everyone did. And to get, you know, 44 minutes and 59 seconds, Mercedes did this just, just amazing. Just absolutely amazing. So the next group, group B, I was able to commentate during the live streams. And that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed commentating. I almost felt like I commentated better than I puzzled. <laughs> now, I don't have a copy of that jigsaw puzzle, but let me explain. In preparation for going to Worlds, I said to everyone, you know, on my team was Vicky from Vicky Makes and Builds, Jeanette and her puzzles, and Jigsaw Juby. I said, does anyone have access to jigsaw puzzles from 2023? But Vicky, being from the UK, she's like, I have a few, I'll bring them. And I also had said to her, do you have any circle puzzles from the Circle of Color series? If you have any of those, I think you should bring them as well. She's like, okay. So Vicky brought along quite a few jigsaw puzzles. And in her stash, she had New York Postcard, which ended up being the jigsaw puzzle for Group B. The funny thing about that, though, was... Vicky had obviously done the jigsaw puzzle. Jeanette and I actually had time to do the jigsaw puzzle the night before, but Juby didn't actually have time to practice on that jigsaw puzzle and she got it in her group. And I thought, what are the odds? <laughs> we managed to get a puzzle that was in one of the preliminary rounds. We all practice it apart from the person who got it and Juby didn't practice it. But she did amazing. I think this was a personal best for Juby. Let me look at her time. I believe it was one hour, two minutes and eight seconds. I was so proud of her. I think that was a personal best for Juby. She'd have to confirm, but she did amazing. And she hadn't even practiced the puzzle. Let's have a look at the top five finishers. Now, when I was commentating, I said, there's gonna be some fast times because there were some great puzzlers on the floor. I knew a lot of them. This was going to be, this was going to be exciting. And sure enough, Teresa from the Czech Republic, 30 minutes and 38 seconds. I mean, how is that even possible? Is that like a new record for a 500 piece done by an individual in competition? Amazing, insane. I was just like, wow, that is nuts. And I met so many of these people. Andrea was lovely. Katrina from Australia. Like, after a while, the competition doesn't become so much about how you and you did. You want to know how everybody else did. You're like, how'd you do? How'd it go? Oh, yeah, that was tough. Or, oh, yeah, you did awesome. Or, oh, that's okay, next time. And it was so much fun. And I loved commentating. And I just want to say to everyone, I saw your lovely comments and support in the chat. And I really, really appreciate it. So... Group B, New York Postcard, Juby was there, she did amazing. So many people did amazing on that jigsaw puzzle. Yes, I would have loved to have done it over the one that I did, but that's the luck of the draw. That's how the cookie crumbles and it's fine because you're not competing um, between groups, you're competing with the people within your group. And yeah, Juby knocked that out of the park. I, I should have confirmed with her, but I do believe that was a personal best time for her. So awesome. So we move on to group C. And Jeanette was in group C and I actually have a copy of this jigsaw puzzle. And it's one of those that comes with a little insert, which was really, really nice. I do like the puzzles that come um, with another little poster because then if you're puzzling with multiple people, you can share. So this one's called the Archaeologist's, the Archaeologist's Desk. Oh my goodness, sorry about that. The Archaeologist's Desk, and it's an Amy Stewart, and people love her artwork, love her illustrations, so I know a lot of people were excited to see this. Very busy. And I spoke to Jeanette, because looking at it now, you can kind of see there's like a color gradient going on. But she said when building it, 
it was hard to detect the color gradient on each piece. It wasn't as noticeable as it is now. Well, some amazing time again on this jigsaw puzzle. Let's look at the top five. So first of all, 40 minutes, 42 minutes, 45. Again, amazing. Some great puzzlers. Anna from Spain. Chiara loved Chiara. She was lovely. Tiffany, Hannah, Ole. Like, I'm just always in awe. I'm standing around, I'm supporting Jeanette, I'm, I'm watching the puzzlers, and it's just such a buzz. And it gets really quiet too. When everybody starts, you're just like, oh, what are they doing? What's going on? And it's all quiet. And then when the first person gets close to finishing and the camera's on them and it's on the big screen and you're like, ah, oh, it's, I just love the thrill and the excitement of the whole environment. It was so much fun. Jeanette did awesome. Let me look at her time, under an hour, 56 minutes and 19 seconds. Great, out of the three of us, I believe Jeanette's the only one that's broken the one hour mark so far. Or I should say out of the four of us, and she did so in practice at home on some puzzles, but she did great, 56 minutes. Jeanette kicked butt on this puzzle, so lovely. And I know she's going to do recap videos as well as Vicky. I'm not sure how much Juby will do because she's still busy traveling, but you'll definitely have to watch their recap videos as well. Another lovely jigsaw puzzle. I had to bring this one home and do it, so I will eventually try to do this one. So that was the morning groups ABC, myself, Juby and Jeanette had participated in those preliminary rounds and we did all end up qualifying, which was great. And then the afternoon group D, Jeanette commentated for that live stream. Now I don't have a copy of that puzzle. It's called Evening in Pisa, I do believe. And that was another one that Vicky brought with her for us to practice. So actually, I think all four of us did it and we all practiced it. We didn't get it in our preliminary rounds, but that was fine. Looking at these results, well, this was an exciting group to watch. Go watch the live streams. Oh my goodness. We had Alejandro, we had Katarina, Tammy and Sarah from the US. Just, oh, some checks were there. It, just boom, 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 the excitement. It was thrilling and exhilarating. What was the time difference? It was seconds, seconds time difference. What is that? 24 seconds time difference between Alejandro and Katharina. Oh my goodness, just so exciting. Just nail biter. And it was great. Jeanette did great commentating, so much fun. Lovely puzzle. I really enjoyed doing that one. And I'm so glad that it was such an exciting round to watch. So definitely watch the live streams, listen to Jeanette commentate. Oh, I, like just reliving it right now, it's just so exciting. I can still feel the buzz and energy of the room. So then it was groupie and finally Vicky had her chance to go. And this was the puzzle Vicky did during her preliminary round. It is called Springtime in Paris and it's, it's an image actually. I thought it was a bit like kind of, a bit of a drawing, but no, it's an image from Getty Images. This is a beautiful jigsaw puzzle. Very nice to do. Jeanette and I ended up doing it one evening. Loved it. And Vicky smashed it. She did so well. In fact, was this a personal? No, I don't think it was a personal best for her, but it was a great time. One hour, eight minutes and 30 seconds. She did awesome. And to tell you the truth, I was so impressed with Vicky, Juby, Jeanette. They're puzzling their time. I was just like, you ladies are amazing. You did great. Oh my goodness, awesome. I was so proud of them. So let's look at the top five for this jigsaw puzzle. We're now at group E, another nail biter. Look at that, 20 seconds difference between first and second place. So many strong puzzlers. Oh my goodness, like so close. And so many different countries represented loved it. I love when it's close. I love when it's exciting. I love when it's just like, you know, you're, you're trying to see and the cameras are trying to rush back and forth and who's gonna finish first and who, you know, I have to give it to all the volunteers and the camera people and the people trying to watch the times. It was a lot. I don't know how they did it. They stood on their feet all day, trying to keep track where everybody was, where everybody was at, and I'll get the camera over here, and all the camera then had to be over there. Whew. You know, hands down to them. And the commentators for finding content to discuss and chat about for hours and hours, that was just amazing. So 
honestly, thank you, thank you to the organizers, the volunteers, the commentators, everybody. They did a wonderful job. Trust me, being there and seeing it in person, it's a lot of work and it's a lot more difficult than it appears. So they did great. And this was a lovely puzzle and another nail biter. So close, so exciting. So we're down to the last group, Group F, and Vicky commentated during this live stream. Now, Group F, they were thrown another doozy. Not only was it another nature edition, but it was a panorama jigsaw puzzle. And I never even thought to practice those. Funny story is the only one of the, these jigsaw puzzles currently available in New Zealand is this one. It's called Summer Thunderstorm Panorama. And I spoke to some people who did it. I don't have a copy of it. And they said that it was good if you did the border first, especially the bottom of the grass, because you quickly realized there was maybe only two rows of grass at the bottom. And then there was like a nice transition line and that they, they liked that there was quite a color gradient in the sky. But if you tried to focus maybe on the thunderstorm lightning like lines, that could be a bit tricky, that maybe trying to use the gradient was easier. But that's just some comments that I heard from people who had done the jigsaw puzzle. Let's look at the top five and let's just say people did amazing. You know, under an hour on this jigsaw puzzle late in the evening, they should be so proud. The top one, what was it? 49 minutes and 58 seconds. Amazing. That's, I'm probably sorry if I mispronounced from Spain, Soraya, I believe. Oh my goodness. Like all these puzzlers just amaze me. I'm just walking around in awe, watching them complete these jigsaw puzzles in such amazing times. So that was the last one for the day, a long day of puzzling groups, A, B, C, and D, F. So Vicky ended up qualifying as well. So everyone that qualified from rounds D, E, F were then in the second semifinals. Looking at all those puzzles from those six rounds, and I totaled, again, if I mentioned this already, sorry if I'm repeating myself, I totaled the number of results per each round, and it came up to 579 participants. So 579 people participated in those six preliminary rounds. If you were to try to say which puzzle was the easiest, which puzzle was the hardest, the only measure I could recommend is looking at the number of people who were able to complete the jigsaw puzzle in the 90 minutes. And in that case, um, the most people that were able to complete a jigsaw puzzle in 90 minutes were from Group B, the New York Postcard, and the least number of people who were able to complete the jigsaw puzzle in the 90 minutes was from Group A, the Lupins. So does that mean the New York Postcard was the easiest jigsaw puzzle and the Lupins was the most difficult puzzle of those preliminary rounds? Maybe, um, but I know some people who would have loved to do the Lupins and some other people who would not have liked to do the New York Jigsaw Puzzle, the New York Postcard one. It's very personal, it, what you enjoy doing and what you enjoy building. So I just wanted to point that out because it's some fun statistics and things to look at. But all the results are online. I'll leave links to the World Jigsaw Puzzle Federation's website down below. You can check out all the results from all the preliminary rounds. And let's move on to the semifinals now. If you're interested in buying any of the puzzles that appeared at the competition, I've added as many as I could find to my two Amazon storefronts. I have a .com and a .co.uk. I'll leave links to those in the description below. Full disclosure, if you shop at Amazon anyway, the price is the same for you, but I get a little commission that I use to go back into the channel to buy more jigsaw puzzles and equipment to make the videos for your viewing pleasure. So thank you so much for that support. So Jeanette, Juby, and I were in the first semifinal. And again, I had said to Vicky, if you could bring some circle jigsaw puzzles for us to practice on, that would be great. Well, she brought two, one of which was the donuts jigsaw puzzle. And she actually gave it to me. I have it. And I'll probably redo it at some point in time. Well, for the first semifinal, we got the, is it pronounced poke bowl? For some reason, I do not know how to pronounce that word. I don't think it's pokey. I think it's poke bowl. And that jigsaw puzzle, for some reason, did not end up coming home with me. I think I gave it away. I thought I had brought it back, but I ended up with the donut jigsaw puzzle instead. So I don't actually have it with me. Um, you get so many puzzles and you trade with people and you have to decide what room you have in your luggage and which 
jigsaw puzzles you want to bring back with you. So I don't have this one from the first semifinal. 179 people that competed in the first semifinal. And I will admit, I felt I got better as the competition progressed in terms of calming down and focusing and just being better at puzzling. And I was so proud that I managed to finish the jigsaw puzzle. And what was interesting, at my table, normally we shared tables, uh, some of us, and normally they sit you side by side. And when I sat down, the person I was sharing the table with grabbed the chair and moved the chair around to the other side. So we weren't side by side, but kind of facing one another. And I thought, ooh, is that gonna, is that gonna be distracting or weird? Wasn't at all, not at all. And I could tell it was a circle puzzle because they're all in those Robin's Burger bags. Um, and we could, everyone knew, circle puzzle, no secret, because they put them on the table. And so I was talking to them and I said, oh, it's a circle puzzle. I, I, are you good with circle puzzles? Remember, there's a lot of language differences here, but we could, everyone was able to communicate. Trust me, trust me when it was like, you did good and oh, you didn't do good. You know, that puzzle was hard. Like we knew what each other was saying. So I'm like, circle, good? You know, are you good with circle? And they just went, no. And I was like, oh no, it's okay, it's okay. So what I really appreciated was that Vicky bringing those circle puzzles for us to practice on, they're very much like color blocked. And so Jeanette and I had done some together and I thought, just do what you did with Jeanette. Just calm down, do what you did with Jeanette. And this Poke Bowl one was very easy to sort by color. I'm not the best with the yellows and oranges and that's where I had difficulty with this jigsaw puzzle. So I sorted by color. I said, calm down, Don Luis, sort by color and then just build from the center out. I didn't rotate the jigsaw puzzle as I was building it because I didn't want to have to rotate the image or the idea of it in my head and I had the box a certain way. And it comes with this huge poster and I actually had that open on the floor next to me in case I had to refer to it. I only started rotating the jigsaw puzzle when I got to the border and I know a lot of people found the border difficult because there wasn't a lot of detail on it. But I quickly sorted by piece shape and just rotated and I didn't find the border too difficult. And I have to say that one of the volunteers, you're supposed you know, you raise your hand when you're getting close, they come, they take your little paper slip, they write in your time, but they walk around and they keep track of who's finishing when. And so there was one next to me, he grabbed the paper already, I, I didn't have to raise my hand, and they just said, there's plenty of time, it's okay. Like just, you're, you're gonna get it, it's okay, you got this. And I, I was like, thank you so much. Like, so encouraging, so encouraging. I was like, oh, thank you. And I was so proud. I managed to get it done. What was my time? An hour, 27 minutes and 50 seconds. Jeanette and Juby did great. Um, do I have their times written here? I thought maybe I wrote them down. Yeah, Jeanette, an hour, eight minutes and eight seconds. Juby, an hour, 16 mix minutes and 59 seconds awesome and also our friend Siobhan did great now in order to qualify to move to the finals the rules were slightly different here it got a bit more difficult so I have it written down you have to have finished the puzzle so you had to complete the puzzle in the 90 minutes to be considered and you had to be the best from your country and then the rest of, of the competitors up to 90 people moved on from the semifinals to the finals. Now let's have a look at the top five results because this is amazing. Kristen was in the semifinal, Andrea, Kelly, Teresa, Mercedes again. Look at these times, just awesome. Kristen, 45 minutes and 22 seconds and a, a minute and 20 seconds later, Mercedes came, came in and finished. Just awesome, like just awesome. Having done the puzzle, and having been there, I'm like, how could they do it that quickly? How can anyone possibly do a jigsaw puzzle that fast? It's just awesome. They're just so amazing. All these puzzlers are amazing. So then Vicky was in the second semifinal. And guess what? <laughs> one of the two circle puzzles she brought for us to practice on, one was the donut. And guess what the second one was? It was the ocean one. 
I have a copy of it because she ended up bringing a copy and then she got a copy during her semi-final. This is the size of the poster that comes with it. So I do have it here and I will eventually speed run this. But finally, one of us got one of the puzzles that we had practiced. So I was pleased that she got this jigsaw puzzle. I enjoyed doing this one. I practiced it already and uh, we sorted by color, which was nice. So this one's called Ocean. Nice big poster, um, a bit hard and wieldly to use during the competition and that's why I had it on the floor next to me and Vicky did awesome let me see I think I wrote down her time here an hour five minutes and eight seconds like oh Vicky Juby and Jeanette just blew me away they did so well now let's look at the top five results for the second semifinal I mean Alejandro 36 minutes 46 seconds Sarah Schuler under 40 minutes just all these amazing puzzlers in the top five. So many people did so well, so exciting. Again, if you can watch the live streams, go do it. It's just a nail biter to watch these puzzlers and how they do. Just so much fun. So then we had the two semifinals done and we knew we had all qualified to make it to the finals. And this was where it was going to be even Steven, playing field, no one could have potentially done this puzzle before because it was an unreleased new Ravensburger jigsaw puzzle which would appear in their 2024 catalog. I think Jeanette said it best when she said the final was great because there was no more pressure to try to qualify to get to the next round. And what was our lovely jigsaw puzzle? Here it is. I definitely brought this one home. It is called, and I'm sorry if I mispronounce it, it's from a location in Sicily and it is Marzamini. Oh, I really don't know how to pronounce that. It is a stock Adobe photo, an outdoor photograph image with chairs, sky building. And you know what? I really enjoyed doing this jigsaw puzzle. And I felt I got better and better and I got calmer and calmer at puzzling. And I enjoyed this experience with each puzzle that I did. And what I really loved, I got to share my finals table with Siobhan from Ireland. That was great. And also behind me, sitting behind us, Stein was there and Laura was there and Siobhan's partner, Francis was there and people just, just supporting one another. Yeah, they didn't qualify and they didn't advance, but they didn't leave and, and you know, just stay in their hotel. They came and supported everybody else. And that was great. And I would have done the same. If I wouldn't have been able to make it to the finals, I would have been back there cheering everybody on as well. So we were all doing this jigsaw puzzle. And to tell you the truth, I really enjoyed it. I'll give you my afterthoughts about the three puzzles and how maybe I could have improved or what I would do differently. But let's talk a bit about, about Jeanette, Vicky, oh my goodness so proud of them and you have to go watch the live stream because this this was the nail biter finish of all finishes okay so first of all before i get into that let's see i have my notes here vicky came in 149 out of 579 contestants jeanette came in 164 I got 172 and Juby finished 178. That's out of the 579 contestants that originally started in the preliminary rounds. And I believe, what else? I have some other notes. Oh, Siobhan, I think she finished 176. And I have a note here. Who else? Oh, the other Kiwi, Andy, who, who went and was just like, oh, I'm in the area. I'm going to go participate. I'm not a speed puzzler. She did great. She made it all the way to the finals as well. And she came in 174th. So oh, it was so much fun. And when I was done puzzling and, you know, I high fived the people behind me and I was so, I was just so pleased to finish the puzzle. And I just kind of sat there because I knew there wasn't a lot of time left. I didn't want to be too disrupted to Siobhan. And I know she, she was puzzling and, and they tell you the five minutes left and gives you a bit of panic but five minutes is still a lot of time and I, I don't know if she heard me or not but she only had a few pieces left and I just wanted to reassure her I knew she had time to finish and I was like there's plenty of time there's plenty of time because remember that volunteer did that to me um, during the semi-final and I felt that calmed me down so I could focus to finish those pieces so I hope that helped her and helped her focus but let's talk about the nail-biting final between Alejandro and Kristen. I mean, 
just, part of me is like, I obviously didn't see it because I was puzzling and I just have to rewatch now on the live streams, but it would have been amazing to be able to watch it. So they were literally 33 seconds difference. Kristen upped her game because she puzzled with two hands. She did amazing. Alejandro did amazing. Jess, oh, shocking. So close. It could have been either one of them. So close. So looking at like the top five results here, a lot of names you would have seen already. You know, Andrea from the US, uh, Marqueta from the Czech Republic, Mercedes, Kristen Alejandro, they did amazing throughout. Even the top 10, Teresa sixth place, and then Katharina seventh, Chiara eight, um, Lorenzo ninth, and Delia tenth. Uh, just, just amazing. The time difference between the top 10 is 10 minutes. But the fact that the time difference between the top two was literally seconds. Oh, like, I don't know what was more nerve wracking for me trying to finish my own puzzle or afterwards finding out the results like what happened? Who won? I got to watch like it was so much fun. And I heard so many of you comment that you love the live streams this year. They had it in Italian, English and Spanish. And I do believe next year they're going to try to have more languages just to make it such an in universal event and bring puzzling and the love of puzzling to more and more people to enjoy. So just some final thoughts about the individual rounds and the puzzles. For me, I'm definitely going to try to go back next year. Um, unless something completely unexpected happens, I want to be there next year. And I thought, here's some things I need to work on. One, I need to do puzzles that are truly difficult for me that are really difficult. And that's how maybe I can just deal with the pressure, the anxiety, and, and knowing that try to increase my speed. So I need to do images and puzzles that are just difficult for me. I should do more, for example, of the Nature Edition jigsaw puzzles. The second idea I got from Jeanette, like we're used to just puzzling and then stopping the timer when we're done. I think I'm gonna put a timer that counts up to an hour 30 minutes or 90 minutes and then goes off and you have to stop and you have to if you're done you're done if you're not you count the pieces remaining obviously if you finish before then stop your timer there is a mental difference between speed puzzling and stopping the timer whenever you're done and oh my goodness the timer the timer the time is running out i gotta hurry time is running out like it it's next level so I need to use the timer differently. I need to limit myself to the 90 minutes and, and having that pressure of the clock counting down. I also need to work on just nerves, just like the performance anxiety. Um, Vicky mentioned that she felt she did so much better at the competition than when she does it at home. Because at home she has lots of distractions, lots of things going on. She can't just focus on the puzzle. But for some reason for her at the competition, she did so well because she could just focus on the puzzle. Whereas here, when I speed puzzle, I can pretty much just focus on the puzzle and I have very little to no distractions. I don't have cameras in my face. I don't have people talking. I don't have the clapping going off whenever everyone's finishing. So that all makes you like a bit, oh. And so I need to work it on dealing with those factors, being less anxious and nervous, calming down, focusing, and realizing I am an okay puzzler and I can do this and it's okay if I don't. On the three specific puzzles, so for my preliminary round, that nature edition, I really need to work on really difficult puzzles that are difficult for me. Could I have done it faster if I would have stressed myself to like go, 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 go? Perhaps, per, I don't think, I honestly don't think I could have finished that puzzle, I really don't. I could have maybe had some more pieces in place, but I definitely wouldn't have enjoyed it. So I'm glad I didn't, but I do think I've learned a lesson. Practice those nature editions, practice those photographs, practice those flowers and landscapes and blurry images. I need to definitely do that more. For the semi-final puzzle, the Poke Bowl, I'm not sure how much faster I could have done that besides having practiced more circle puzzles and being more familiar with the circle puzzle Robin's Burger cut. That would have helped. So I'm really glad I did one before because I don't know if I would have been able to finish that puzzle in time 
if I not had practiced those two previously. Um, I haven't done many circle puzzles, so I'm very appreciative that Vicky brought those and she had access to those and I was able to practice those. So I think in general, circle puzzles, panorama puzzles, not the standard 500 piece cut puzzles, I'd like to practice more of those. As for the final jigsaw puzzle, I was really nervous and I did a lot of sorting. I did some build as I sort, but I did do a lot of sorting. And in fact, all the uh, chair area and the tables, I sorted all those pieces because I thought it would be difficult. But then when I pulled them back and I grabbed one at a time, I was able to do my build, like just grab them and put them down and figure out where they go. I do think that maybe I could have done this jigsaw puzzle faster if I would have done more build as I sort. Less sorting, more building. I double handled a lot of pieces. So I want to wait, you know, maybe a month or so and I want to redo these jigsaw puzzles and I'm thinking that I could potentially get closer to my hour 15 minute mark with this puzzle. Of course, I have a bit more familiarity with it now, but I do think I maybe even in competition could have done this one faster if I would have built more puzzle pieces uh, instead of sorting them. But I needed to sort to calm myself down. So if I would have tried to build would I have been too nervous and not be able to build right away? I don't know. It's hard to say, but it'll be interesting to redo all these jigsaw puzzles. So yeah, I'll make more videos. The next video will be a pairs and a teams compilation. And I will admit, I loved pairs and teams. I loved it more than, than puzzling individually because you have someone to, to help you out with. Uh, everything and the stress in the moment, that was loads of fun. And I'm also going to do a kind of like a mini puzzle haul because I've got more puzzles than just the ones at the competition. And of course, I have a lot more competitions to come. Australian Nationals in November, um, the Battle of the YouTube Puzzlers at the end of January, New Zealand Masters in February, and oh, so lots and lots of content to come for speed puzzling. But on top of that, I will also get back to other puzzles and content as well as working on the... 42,000 Educa Around the World Jigsaw Puzzle. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. For the love of puzzles, I hope you enjoy my videos. Please consider subscribing. And until next time, ciao!